And kind of what we were singing earlier, um, the song before the last song, it says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, you are for me, and I'll stand on everything that you have done for me. Come on. We gotta stand on everything that God has done for us. Not forget what God has done for us. Every single one of us, we all have a testimony. I'm, I'm pretty sure every single one of us, we probably could have all come up here, but we probably would, have, would be here all night. But the testimony that you have, remember that testimony. Hold on to that testimony. Don't let that testimony leave your mind, but constantly remember what God, has, what God has done for you. Whether if it's God providing for you when you were financially lacking, or if God sets you free when you were depressed, or when God sets you free when you had suicidal thoughts, or when you're living life with just sadness and God set you free, or whether you have some kind of pain in your body and God healed you, whatever that testimony is, do not forget that testimony. I feel so strongly like God is telling, telling that today. You know, just uh, leading up to today, honestly, it was really hard. Last time I was, I was so close just to even just calling and saying, I, I can't do it. Like, I, I've been having headaches this whole week, and it's just been really hard. I feel like the enemy was just trying to permit, prevent me from um, preaching this word today. So I, I really strongly feel God is, God is wanting to say something tonight. And just remember, hold on to that testimony. Remember that testimony. Remember what God has done. Remember what he has done. Amen? Amen. All right, so can we turn to Exodus chapter three? Yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, Samuel, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, Exodus chapter three. I'm not gonna be reading through uh, Exodus chapter three, I'm just gonna uh, mention it really quick. But for those of you guys who grew up watching Christian cartoons, this Prince of Egypt, you guys probably, come on, can we give it up for Prince of Egypt? <laughs> if you guys haven't watched it, you guys should watch it. It's, it's amazing. It's probably one of the best cartoon Christian uh, movies there are. <laughs> but so Moses, so uh, in uh, Exodus chapter three, actually no, before we get into Exodus chapter three, um, so kind of what led me to preach this sermon is actually, I was going through a season where I was just forgetting, forgetting what God has done in my life. And one of these days, um, like throughout the week, I think it was right when um, Maverick City Music, for those of you guys who know who uh, Maverick City Music is, they came out with a new album. And there's this one song called Remember. Man, for those of you guys who know that song, that song is powerful. Man. But th there's these lyrics in that song that stood out to me. Is, it said, we remember, we won't forget how you took our lives from the pit. We remember, we won't forget Look at where I am now, look at where I was back then. Those words hit me so powerfully. There's so many days in my life where, I'm pretty sure all of our lives, where we feel like giving up, where we feel like God's not moving anymore, or God, uh, he still can't set us free today. But God, he keeps reminding me, he's like, remember where you were back then and look at where, where you are now. And then I remember just right then and there, I'm like, God, how could I forget? <laughs> Man, we, we forget too quickly of what God has done in our lives. And that's why I was, I was trying to emphasize the testimonies. Your testimony is powerful because it's evidence of what God has done in your life. And so Exodus chapter three, Moses, 
So Moses, Moses was talking, or God was talking to Moses through a burning bush. I'm not going to read the whole story, but if you guys haven't learned this already yet, um, go back and read it. Uh, but so God was speaking to Moses through a burning bush. And then after, Exodus chapter four, verse one. I'm actually gonna read this, so. So then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord of their God, God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading to, I'm gonna keep reading to 10. So, so furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow, and he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, it was restored like, like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. Then the water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of of tongue. When I was reading this, I'm like, man, what the, man, come on, Moses. Verse 10, he says, then Moses said to the Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. You know what blows my mind? God just spoke to Moses through a burning bush. God just took a staff and turned it into a snake. God just took Moses' hand, he put it in his bosom, came out as leprous, he put it again, it was healed. God just did three miracles right in front of him and Moses is like, God, I don't think you can speak through me. Are you kidding me, Moses? (laughs) You don't think God can speak to you after he spoke through a burning bush? After I took your rod and made it into a snake? after I took your hand, made it leprous, and made it good again, and you're still doubting me and saying, God, how can you speak through me? Moses, you gotta remember. (laughs) Moses, why don't you remember what God has done for your lives? I feel like God's saying the same thing to us too. Why have we forgotten what God has done in our lives? God, I don't think you can heal me. How about when I healed you three months ago? Have you already forgotten what I've done for you? God, I don't think you could help me get out of this sin that I'm struggling with. Do you not remember when you were struggling with the other sin back then and I set you free from that? God, I'm not gonna give because I am financially lacking right now. God's like, remember when you were lacking finances and you gave and I provided for you. Why are we so quick to forget what God has done in our life? This is something God was screaming at me, so don't feel offended if I'm you know, screaming at you guys because God screamed at me first. <laughs> God screamed at me first. It's like, why have you forgotten what I've done for your life? I have done so much things for you yet we're so focused on what we're going through instead of what God has brought us through. 
Don't focus on what you're going through. Focus on what God has already brought you through. And when you focus on that, you're no longer lo focusing on your situation, but you're focusing on God, how God already brought you out of your situation. And you're using that testimony to give you faith in that moment. Man, we cannot forget what God has done in our life. We cannot be like Moses, who back to back to back, see miracle after miracle after miracle, God doing things in our life, and we're saying, God, I don't think you could, you could, uh, well, for Moses it was, God, I don't think you could speak through me anymore. Or I, I don't think you can speak through me. For us it could be like, God, I don't know if you could heal that person that I'm gonna go pray for. I was like, have you forgotten the miracles I've already done? And honestly, this is something that God really spoke to me because I, honestly, lately in the season, when I've been praying for healing for people, it's been really hard. I've just been having this unbelief for some reason. And then God kept reminding me, he's like, Max, remember at the reservation when you were praying for that person's knee and it shifted back into place do you not remember of how I healed that person? Do you not remember that person that you prayed for at the park whose knees were, were just hurting and, he, and that, that man couldn't get up, but after you prayed for him, he started jumping around and dancing and rejoicing. It's like, Max, have you forgotten? I can't stress this enough, we can't forget what God has done in our life. See, the, the enemy, he wants to take our attention off of our testimony, off of what God has done in our life. Because when he takes, us, takes our attention off of that, that's when we begin to doubt. But if we, if we just begin to think about of the things that he's already done in our lives, We begin to have faith through any situation that we're going through because like, God, I know you can heal this person, why? Because you've done it back then. And the God that healed that person back then is the same God that can heal that person now. The God that, the God that set me free when I was, when I had chains in my life back then is the same God that can set me free now through any other chain that the enemy tries to bring into my life. It's the same God. Our God hasn't changed. He healed three months ago. He heals now. Our God does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, forever. It's the same God. And that's what's important to remember your testimony and what God has done in your life. Amen? I just wanna bring another example from the Bible. I mean, Exodus is filled with people forgetting what God has done in their life. Which makes me mad sometimes. <laughs> but Exodus 14, okay, I'm just gonna really quickly go through these points. Exodus 14, most, all of you guys should know this. God split the seas for the Israelites. Exodus 16, 11 through 16. God rain, rained bread from heaven. Exodus 15 to 22 to 27. God made bitter waters sweet for the Israelites. And then Exodus 32. Man, this makes me mad. The Israelites forgot what God has done and made a golden calf. How can you, man, this, this blows my mind. How can you worship another God? How can you make another God for yourself, which is what the Israelites did. They made a golden calf after God split the seas for them, after God rained bread from heaven, literally, he rained bread from heaven. You don't see that too often. I don't know about you guys, I don't walk through the park randomly and see bread come from heaven. I don't know how they were not amazed about that. I mean, even after God splitting the seas. He made bitter water sweet. I 
I just can't stress it enough. We cannot be like the Israelites. We cannot be like Moses. We cannot forget what God has done in our life. He has done so many things in each and every one of our lives. If you don't think so, just spend some time in your, in your secret place and start meditating on things God has brought you through. I promise you'll have a whole list of things, God, of, of miracles, of things that God has gotten you out of. You'll have a long list of miracles that God has done in your life. And when you begin to see that long list, when another problem in your life comes up, you're not gonna doubt anymore. Because like, oh, I have a problem, but guess what? I have a bigger list of the problems that God resolved. And when you see that list of all the things that God has set you free from, or people that God has healed through you, or testimonies of how God provided for you financially, when you see that list, I promise if you, if you just remember, or if you just, honestly, just look at this list every single day, I promise you every single thing that comes up in your life, you will, you will not doubt because you know that God has already done it before. And if God has done it before, he's gonna do it again. Because like I was saying, he's the same God. He's the same God. And actually, can I get somebody on the keys? I'm gonna share one more example. But Matthew 14, I'm not gonna read from him, I'm just gonna go through points again. Um, Peter, I love Peter, but he became a Moses and he became like the Israelites. <laughs> Peter, Walks on water. Peter helps, or Jesus helps Peter catch a multitude of fish. Peter witnessed Jesus feed multitudes with five loaves and two fish. He sees Jesus perform miracles throughout his whole walk with him. Then Luke 22, 54, 62, Peter denies Jesus three times. I don't know if there's anything else I could add on to this sermon. I just really want to stress this point that I've been making the whole night of not forgetting, not forgetting what God has done in your life. Not forgetting the temptations that God has gotten you or helps you overcome. Can we just stand up? Let's just begin to pray. Jesus, we thank you, God, for every single thing that you have done in our life. God, I pray that every single one of us not forget, not forget, God, the testimony that we have in our life. Not forget, Jesus, of what you have done in our lives, Lord. Forgive us, God, of our unbelief, Jesus. Forgive us, God, of our unbelief after seeing, God, the many things, Jesus, that you have done in our lives, of the many miracles, God, that we saw you do. God, forgive us for doubting you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we serve the same God that's unchanging. We thank you, God, that you're still a healer today. We thank you, God, that you're still a chain breaker today. We thank you, Jesus, that you still give hope today. We thank you, God, that you set people from addictions today, too. We thank you, God, that you still heal people from, or set people, uh, people from uh, suicidal thoughts today too, to Jesus. Thank you, God, that you still give hope to the hopeless.
Jesus, forgive us, God, for, forgi for forgetting what you have already done in our lives. We thank you, God, for the, that we serve such an amazing God, a miracle worker, working God, a chain-breaking God, a joy-giving God, a peace-giver God. We thank you, God, May he continues to work in every single person's life today, tomorrow. And I pray, God, may he continues to give them even more and more testimonies. And I pray, God, let every single one of their lists continue to grow bigger and bigger. And let's continue to glorify you, God, with the list of testimonies, God, that we have in our life. And I pray, Jesus, as you give us these testimonies, as you continue to provide these testimonies in our life, let us not forget, God, what you have done. Let us not put to side, God, the work that you have done in our lives, Lord.
resurrected King is a resurrected me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is a resurrected me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Yeah, you speak. in my heart if there's anybody who's here today who might be struggling with some kind of sin who might be struggling with some kind of temptation who might just need uh, just healing inside of their body or if you're just struggling with something you need freedom from it and at first you were doubting but now you have more faith because you remember what God has done in your life if you believe if you believe God can set you free today if you believe God can do that miracle for you today if you believe you can set, see that breakthrough in your life today, just come to the front. Come to the front and we'll have our leaders pray for you. Yes, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you're drawing every single person who might be struggling with thoughts of depression, God. There's anybody here who's struggling with some kind of sin, Lord, that they just want freedom from, and that they were doubting at first, Lord, but they remember, God, of the other sins, God, that you have brought out of. I pray, Jesus, may you just draw every single person who just wants to receive freedom inside of their life, God, who just wants to change to be broken inside of their life, who wants to receive peace inside of their life. or who might just be going through a tough time right now, God, but they just want, they just want you, God, just to restore that joy into their life. If this is you, as we continue to worship, just come up to the front and we'll pray for you. We thank you, Jesus. 